Hey y'all, it's your girl, Dr. Nina. And my mother always taught me that the way that you move in your 20s is gonna determine how you be looking in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and so on. My mother is over 70 and gets so many compliments on her skin and her youthfulness. And she made sure that she taught my sister and I how to take care of our skin and to do good things by our skin early. Because you only get one. It's not like skin is out here for buy one, get one free. Know this, my skin has come quite a far away from having hydrotinitis superativa, being over 100 pounds heavier, eczema flares and even oiliness. So today we're talking my 10 biggest skincare mistakes to avoid while in your 20s. From looking as ashy as a busted brick in the alleyway to having a face so caked up full of oil that I had enough to oil my scalp and prepare a meal after. I did all of that so you don't have to. Our skin really begins the aging process in our mid to late 20s, believe it or not. So building a skin routine that makes sense that I can stay consistent with has been the thing that has really helped me as I've gotten older. I do know that there's more skincare mistakes, but I'm talking about the main ones that I've made as well as watched others make. And now being in my 30s, I find more time to spend on the challenges that I have. And I know you can build a routine that works for you as well. And if you can relate to some of these mistakes, make sure you let us know down below in the comments and also click like on this video. And y'all know I always tell you if you're having severe issues make sure you make time to go and see a doctor all items i mentioned can be found down below in a good old information section let's go and y'all don't forget to thumbs up this video if you like it comment share and subscribe and also click on those notification bells so you can know when i upload on thursdays and sundays make sure you also check out my now that's life podcast which is now live and you can check it out on all your major podcasting platforms links to my podcast can be found down below in the information section now a lot of us be wanting to hit it and quit it your skin that is we all get in a hurry sometimes but quickies are not for your face sis i remember moving so fast back in the day that parts of my face and my body probably never saw the products or the water fully. That brought nothing but ashy and disgusted heartache and pain. Washing your face and your body too quickly can only bring residue buildup like clogged pores and even dry ashy skin. The jawline, the hairline, and the nose are particular parts of your face that often get missed in the rinsing process. And not to forget, it's people out here that's not even washing their legs. Ew. And this is why I spend time massaging my face and my body with the products that I use in order to make sure that they're fully saturated and make sure that I receive the benefits. Also, it helps me to slow down to see the areas of my face and body that need some extra tender loving care. When you move too fast, you miss all the details. And I actually love me and mine. So anytime I get to touch myself to give myself some love, I'm gonna take advantage of it. And you should too. Now, many of us also forget that the whole body should be included in our skincare routine. In my 20s, I was quick to discuss the acne, the dark marks, and all the spots that were happening on my face. But I had to learn how to balance out the love to the rest of my body. Remember this when it comes to your body. This too shall sag, especially without proper care. As we age, our collagen and elastin production slows down more and more and more. What you do to your face, do also unto your body. That's a commandment you by using a rich moisturizer and sealing in the moisture daily, you'll be fly and not dry. Even in my 20s, I started to try out rich moisturizers with alpha hydroxy acids, CoQ10, and even vitamin C. I also chose washes that were free of all the sulfates and the other stripping ingredients. As good as all these body washes smell, sometimes they can leave you dry and thirsty just like some of these quarantine relationships. And you can also be dry on the inside. Staying healthy on the inside and also staying hydrated on the inside are key to making sure the skin looks its most plump and hydrated. And as it relates to the whole body, I would also commit the moving violation of doing horrible things to my body when it came to hair removal. And I mean shaving with any and everything. And I'm talking everything. I learned quick that it was not healthy for my skin to be shaving with blades that were dull because going over the same areas over and over is only damaging the skin. The blades should be sharp and possibly multiples in order to give you the best shave of your life every time. I also learned it was best for me to use something with a moisture strip on it. I love going with my Chic Hydro Silk, which has multiple blades and also lasts a while, but some like disposables or electronic razors. I also like things that get close to me and get a good hair removal with 
without being damaging to my skin. And I also learned that you should be shaving with the direction of your hair, depending on how it grows across your body. And you shouldn't be shaving over bumps, lumps, and open wounds. And you shave in the direction of your hair to avoid ingrowns and also tugging at the skin, which can age it and cause other issues. Make sure that you check out my video on shaving, which I've linked down below, which will give you more tips. Now we know that if we're barely washing completely, then we're probably missing key areas like our necks. I learned from research, experience, and my mother that you should never skip over the neck. It was a great rule of thumb for me to think about this. If I was doing all this great anti-aging and moisturizing things to my face, I need to carry that through to other aging areas of my body, like the neck. This means cleansing, moisturizing, treating, and protecting. And the same thing goes for the end of day. We need to be washing off, rinsing thoroughly, and cleaning it and giving it the same nighttime routine as well. Look y'all, we need our necks. So you need to be treating it with the utmost respect and taking care of it just like you do the skin on your face or other aging areas of your body. So y'all, I'm literally about to roast us all. I have in the past used water that was way too hot on my face and my body. Bad move. Washing your face and body with water that's way too hot can end up opening up your pores and stripping your skin of its natural and protective barriers and drying it out. Instead of showering or washing my face in super hot water, y'all see me using lukewarm water all the time. And better yet, I like to use the power of steam. Steam also assists with extractions and properly relieving the skin of acne. By softening the skin. This also keeps us from one of the worst moving violations of my 20s, picking at my face or also dry squeezing my bumps, which also led to more acne as well as deep scars. So let's let that go too. So all in all, washing your face and body with overly hot water can end up aggravating it even more, causing more of the problems that you don't wanna see like acne, dark spots, and other issues. So let's get over boiling ourselves, shall we? Back in my 20s, I would always feel like I was invincible and could get away with all of these skin violations. But baby, them ghosts the Christmas past will come back to haunt you. A lot of times I would fail to look at the ingredients list on the things that I was using on my body or my face all over me as well as my makeup ingredients but over time and through experience I learned to avoid parabens synthetic fragrances propylene glycol aluminum and more that's why y'all see me making so many of my own skincare products which hopefully in the future I'll be able to offer to you but I learned that those things are linked to allergies and eczema flares hormone imbalance and even reproductive issues y'all let's not even get on the using other people's makeup brands brushes and their products. Let's be real here. You don't know where that stuff has been. Even your dear sweet grandmother could have been sliding across the floor in the toilet, wrapped up in some dirty clothes, not washed for over a month or ever, Lord. So it's better to use your own, keep it clean and keep an eye on what you're using. Now y'all back in my 20s, those face wipes were starting to blow up. And when it came to using these, I should have been locked up for my violations. Now what we all learned is that yes, using wipes was convenient. Like when you're outside or when you come in the house after a long night or something like that, it's great. Or even to get the face washing process started. But they can't thoroughly clean your face like good old fashioned water and a face wash. And upon further look, they could actually leave around oil and grime and things on your face that could clog up your pores and cause more breakouts. When I was using them and not washing properly, especially at night, I would wake up to a face full of problems. So I would only use those when I had on a thicker amount of makeup that I wanted to get off first and then follow by washing because those things do not replace washing your face. Now, I don't know about y'all, but in my 20s, when I was really worried about every little thing that had to do with my skin, I would start doing the most, which often led to the least results, that is. It's important to be consistent, but not overdo it. And yes, it is essential to give your face a good cleansing at least twice a day. But cleansing way too much or using items that are high in alcohol content and using way too many various acids and such can interfere with your skin's epidermis by stripping its protective natural oils and the balance of healthy bacteria. This is when I would see extra skin issues like sensitivities and dark spots and things that I never had before because my skin's barrier was aggravated. And y'all, back in the day, my skin was victim to these long 
10 plus step skincare routines. I didn't need it. It was too much and a setup for failure. Keep things simple and effective by actually getting a routine you get into over time that you can maintain. You want to be consistent. And if you're confused on the things you should use, get in to see a dermatologist, an esthetician, or someone who can really help you with the ingredients of your skincare. For me, it was good to just have the basics, a good cleanser, a toner, a light eye cream, perhaps a light serum, like a vitamin C serum, a good moisturizer, at least a 30 SPF, and possibly something to treat any dark marks or scars that I had. And less is more also applies to the makeup we put on our faces. I would try putting on way too much, which would often only lead me to other problems with my skin. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna admit it. In my 20s, I actually slept in my makeup sometimes. On those long and crazy nights, the bed seemed much better than my sink. But I would wake up to a face full of new friends. Oh, and let me tell you about that one time I actually wanted to let my professional makeup last two days. I slept in it and it was a huge mistake. I could literally feel the breakouts forming. So I learned to make sure that my skincare setup was always ready for me when I got home. The little counter space that you got, go ahead and have it set up so you're not so lazy. So my cellar water and also my makeup removal towels that I showed you all in a previous video, as well as all my other skincare products became my best friend for keeping out in my view. If you don't clean the makeup off thoroughly, you might find yourself in a cycle of destruction. You break out, cover it, make it worse, and then you scar. The more we do this to our skin, the more damage we will leave behind. And you get to enjoy it more in your 30s. Now did I tell y'all when I first got into exfoliation, I nearly scraped my face off? Yes. I would exfoliate almost every day and super rough, especially if I had a rough patch or acne and it only made it worse. Exfoliation or removal of the dead skin cells can improve your skin's tone, texture, and appearance over time. But doing way too much can actually damage your skin barrier. Over exfoliation can lead to redness, irritation, a rash, and breakouts if you don't watch it. And exfoliation is not one size fits all, so you should be careful when trying new products and only try things that work well with your own skin. And whatever you choose, whether mechanical or product based, be careful, be gentle, and don't go overboard. Failure to moisturize in your 20s doesn't seem to hurt you, but oh baby, it will come back to haunt you. Using a great moisturizer for you can definitely balance the skin's oil and also protect the skin's barrier. And honestly, who wants to walk around dry and disgusted? And worse yet, skin that's overly producing oils because you refuse to balance the moisture barrier. The same goes for using an SPF. I started being more persistent with using an SPF in my 20s so that I could get in the habit because this is for life. And I'm experimenting with new ones, though I like the Neutrogena one for now, I'm trying new ones and they have at least a 30 SPF. And I'm not gonna sit here and argue. I do realize that sun is good for your skin with the vitamin D and all, but when we don't protect our skin at a level from the sun, we're letting UV rays damage our skin unrestrained. This can actually cause things like dryness, dullness, loss of elasticity, sagging, leathery skin, large pores, and even sunspots. So get in on that SPF, the earlier, the better. I'm gonna leave you guys with just a few bonus and quick tips to think on. Always remember that what you put in your body and do for your body will show on the outside. Water, regular exercise, and foods and items rich in vitamin A, E, and K are always great to add to the mix. Next thing, always do your research and don't trust your skin to every and anybody. And remember, expensive is not always better. Some of my favorite products have been lower in price, they keep the ingredients consistent and I can always find them around. And another thing, stop trying to treat every skin concern at one time. I know in my 20s, going through the skin changes and all of that, I wanted to treat everything at one time. You can't. Focus heavily on an issue that you have and a lot of times you find that a lot of the other issues will subside. That gets us out of buying all these different products which probably won't even work for us, especially when we're slathering on way too much. So I hope this video has been beneficial to you guys and that you learned just a little bit about some of the things and the mistakes that I've made. Remember I did this so you don't have to. Make sure that you comment, share this video with someone who can use it and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate you. Beautiful brown baby doll. Peace. Special thanks to Jason Bowie of Trinity Media Solutions for co-producing and filming today's video. His information can be found down below in the information section. 
Thanks so much for all the love and support over on my new website. If you haven't already, go ahead and check it out and join me for new ways to interact with me, giveaways and prizes, weekly emails, as well as my free eight day supernatural video course, which is free when you sign up. Oh, 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 o